Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. This program is based on senior secondary chemistry course. In the previous section, you have learned that liquids have definite volume but no definite shape and are almost incompressible and can diffuse. I'm Dr. Alka Mehrotra. We will continue lesson five, the gaseous and the liquid state. During this part of the program, we will discuss about evaporation, vapor pressure, surface tension, and viscosity. Evaporation. Evaporation is the process by which liquid changes into vapor. It occurs at all temperature from freezing point to boiling point of the liquid and evaporation is the process which we see in our day-to-day -day life also. Suppose if you are putting water anywhere, next day we don't find water, it means the water drop that has been ev evaporated. Now there are few factors that uh, affecting evaporation. Rate of evaporation of liquid depends on temperature, surface area of the liquid exposed to the atmosphere, wind speed and humidity. Now how surface area, uh, more the surface area faster will be the evaporation. For example, spreading of clothes for faster drying. This is very common example which we see in our home. We never put cloth uh, just a crumbled form when we have to dry, we just spread it. Now why? Because when we are spreading, surface area is more and the cloth gets a drier little faster than heat. If we supply heat to the liquid, evaporation is faster. The wet clothes dry faster in sun. Now in rainy days, you have noticed it takes lot of time. Why? Because humidity is there, the moisture content is there. The increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy of the molecule of the liquid and the liquid evaporates at faster rate. And all this depend on intermolecular force. Stronger the force, fewer molecules escape. In alcohol, let's compare alcohol and water. Alcohol and water, if you just put one drop, so we will find alcohol evaporates faster. So what happens? In alcohols, the attractive forces are weaker than those in water. Hence, alcohol evaporates faster than water. You know that the liquid placed in open vessel evaporate faster if we compare these two. Uh, if however the liquid is allowed to evaporate in closed vessel, evaporation occurs but after some time the level of liquid does not change any uh, further and becomes constant. In the beginning, the rate of evaporation is greater than the rate of condensation. Now here you can see, first I have taken the open vessel, evaporation is seen. And the second you see, the rather vaporization is more than the condensation. Then slowly, vaporization is equivalent to condensation. So this is how the, the vapors which apply pressure on that, this is the vapor pressure. But as more and more molecule accumulate in the space above the liquid, rate of condensation gradually increases. After some time, rate of evaporation becomes equal to the rate of condensation, becomes equal to the rate of condensation and equilibrium state is reached. These molecules exert certain pressure over the surface of the liquid. The pressure applied by the vapor on the liquid surface is known as the vapor pressure. So, the pressure exerted by vapors above the liquid surface when these are in equilibrium with the liquid at a given temperature is known as vapor pressure of the liquid. So, this is one of the properties. Now, what factors affecting the vapor pressure? The vapor pressure of the liquid depends on the nature of the liquid. It depends on the temperature. Vapor pressure increases with increasing the temperature. So when we are temp increasing the temperature, what happens? Kinetic energy is more. If kinetic energy is more, it means the velocity of the molecules are faster. They will just escape out. Okay, so the vapor pressure is directly proportional to the temperature. Then here comes one term that boiling point. 
the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the atmospheric pressure is called the boiling point. So, you have seen that what is the vapor pressure? Vapor pressure is nothing, just the pressure applied on the liquid surface is the vapor pressure. Now, when this vapor pressure is become equivalent to the atmospheric pressure, at that particular temperature, anything uh, starts boiling like in water. So, at one atmospheric pressure, boiling point is known as its uh, normal uh, boiling point. Now, there is a vast difference between evaporation and boiling. As I said before, evaporation is taking place all the time. This time also somewhere evaporation is taking place. Because now also like suppose if you see the ocean, river and all with the help of the sun rays, the uh, evaporation is taking place. But boiling cannot take place at all temperature. It takes place at a definite temperature. And what was that temperature? The temperature at which the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure at that particular temperature boiling takes place. Then evaporation is a slow process because it is continuous, continuously going on. Boiling is a fast process. You have noticed when you have put uh, water uh, in a pan and the gas, it's a fast. At particular temperature, it starts boiling. Now, evaporation occur only at the surface of the liquid. So, we can say it's a surface phenomena. Only the molecule which are at the surface, they will get evaporated faster because they are directly in, in direct contact with the atmosphere. And boiling uh, take occur throughout the liquid. So, we can say boiling is a bulk phenomena. Boil, when uh, uh, water is boiling, it does not mean that water is boiling only at the surface. Water is boiling throughout. So, it is a bulk phenomena. So, there is a basic difference between the evaporation and boiling. Now, when a small quantity of water is poured on a clean uh, glass plate. Now, I am going to tell you about the surface tension basically. When we take a small quantity of water and we pour on a clean glass plate, it spreads in all direction uh, in the form of a thin film. You all have noticed. Now, but when we uh, uh, take a small quantity of mercury uh, and is poured on the glass plate, it takes the form of spherical drop. You may say that you have not seen the mercury, but yes, you have noticed, you must have noticed any thermometer when it breaks we find that mercury comes out from that. And if you try to pick those mercury droplets, it is very difficult to take it out. Why? And it is always in a spherical uh, drop form. So, we can say it means there is some difference between the arrangement of the water and the uh, mercury. Similarly, small quantity of water is poured on a greasy plate it also takes the form of small globule like mercury. Please notice this thing. If you take the uh, normal plate and put little uh, uh, oil on it and put water in both the plates, you will find the difference between the uh, water droplets. Now, this shows that the behavior of liquid is controlled not only by the gravitational force, we can say the weight, but some other forces also act on it which depends on the nature of the surface in contact. If the weight of the liquid is negligible, then as the shape is preferably spherical, like raindrops, so bubbles, you find that they are the spherical shape because the area is lesser. Raindrops basically we say it is a distorted uh, spherical shape. It is not exactly uh, spherical, but it is a distorted form. Okay, I will explain the surface tension by this uh, figure. You can see, uh, we will compare the water molecules at the surface and the water molecule which is there in between the uh, water. Molecule B lying inside the liquid is surrounded by other molecules and so is attracted equally in all directions. Hence, the net force of attraction acting on the molecule is zero. A molecule A which, which is lying on the surface is attracted more by the molecule lying in the bulk of the molecule. It means from the downside 
done by the molecules lying above it in the vapor phase. Therefore, the molecule A experiences a net inward attraction or inward pull as a result surface behaves as it were under tension because the surface is getting pulled by the water surface because it is not the, the net force is not zero here. We can say it means the tension is developed over there. So here we can say as it is developed on the surface of the water, so the name is given to the surface tension. So what exactly is surface tension? It refers to the amount of force performing per unit length and is perpendicular to the line on the surface of the liquid. So surface tension formula is we can say F upon L of force per unit length and it is denoted by the Greek letter gamma. Unit is Newton per meter. As you know, force unit is Newton and the L that is length unit is meter. So we can say the unit is Newton per meter. Now surface uh, tension decreases on rising the temperature. Uh, when we are uh, increasing the temperature, so what happens? Kinetic energy of the molecule uh, is more and that decreases the intermolecular force of attraction. So con consequently, the surface tension decreases. Now surface tension we can see um, in our day to day life also. The first a few examples are there. First is spherical shape of liquid uh, drop. That is what I told you just now. It takes the shape of the sphere because the area of that is lesser. So wetting and non-wetting property means uh, uh, like water wets the uh, things like cloth and all. Now non-wetting property like mercury. If you put mercury like in thermometer, we jerk the thermometer before taking the uh, temperature of our body and it does not stick on the surface of the glass. So we can say that this is a non-wetting property. I'll explain this further later on. Before that, I'll come to the capillary action and I want to show you one activity of that. Capillary action. Before I show you this activity, I just want to uh, tell you one example of that which is of day to day life that uh, you have noticed that uh, uh, water, uh, I mean the plants carry water and minerals and if you have noticed in your previous classes uh, like if you take a white color flower and you put in the ink that is blue or red color the water rises over there and after some time the white color flower you will find that it becomes uh, the ink color. So now I will show you the activity. This is the paper. Now paper I am going to put in the ink. I have taken the ink Reason is the ink water because you can see it very clearly. I am not going to dip completely. I just put the water, uh, I mean this you can see water I have taken rather let me let little bit fold it so it will be more clear to you. Just the end of this will be touching over there. Can you see it? See, now what is happening? you will find that or I'll do one thing for your better understanding. See, I'll put it over there and after some time we'll see how much what uh, it has taken the water because I have made uh, paper touch only to the surface of the water, not more than that. And let's see how much water is raised on the paper. Now let's check. See. So have you noticed maybe just not one minute also 30 seconds I put this only this much surface uh, on the uh, water surface and it has taken water till here you can see. So this is the capillary action. So how this goes? Water is taken by the other molecule, other molecule, other molecule. So it rises up. So this is how it goes up. Is it clear? So now you can see the water has raised till here. So this is the capillary action. So from the, uh, I mean the molecules 
uh, of water are getting raised up and up. So, this is again a property or we can say uh, this is again a surface tension. Okay, the other effect of surface tension is curved meniscus. What is a meniscus basically? We, you can see here, I have taken water and mercury. Uh, in the water, if you put both in the test tube, we can see in one, the first test tube, uh, this is the concave uh, meniscus is formed. When the particle of liquid are more strongly attracted to the container, that is the Edison, uh, than the cohesion causing to the uh, liquid to climb the wa walls of the container. Now, this is very new to you. What is cohesion and what is addition? Now, what is the meaning of that? Cohesion means when the molecules are attracted towards each other and the addition means when, uh, when the, the attraction between the water molecule and with the surface on which it is kept like. We have taken uh, water and we have taken mercury in the test tube, right? Now, water, the cohesion molecule will be lesser than the addition. That is why the test tube becomes wet. So, when you are putting both, you just uh, remove the water from the test tube. You will find the test tube becomes wet. While uh, when you are taking the mercury in the test tube and you just remove the mercury, you will find the, uh, the test tube becomes totally dry. So, reason is that the addition means the, the, the attraction of the molecules of the liquid and the surface on which it is kept, uh, the, the attraction is there. So, that we will find in the water case, but in the liquid case, we can say the cohesion is more. It means the molecule of the mercury are more attracted towards each other rather than the molecule of the mercury and uh, the attraction with the surface. So, conversely, a convex meniscus occur when the particles in the liquid have stronger attraction to each other than to the material of the container. So, we can say in water, we have the concave meniscus. You can see the meniscus shape while in uh, mercury case, it is always a convex because cohesion is more than the addition. Now, let us start viscosity. Some liquids like glycerol or honey flow slowly while others like water and alcohol flow rapidly. This difference is due to the internal resistance to flow which is called viscosity. Viscosity arises due to the strong intermolecular forces between the molecules that holds them together and resists the passing of layers over each other. The layers of molecules of flowing liquid uh, that are in contact with the surface are stationary. Increase in the distance between the two layers increases the velocity of the upper layer. Flow of liquid with regular gradation of velocity while passing over other layer is termed as laminar flow. Now, I want to show you before I discuss anything, uh, first example of both. I will show you this with the activity. Now, we will compare the more viscous and there is no viscosity in the liquid. Now, let us compare the flow. I am going to pour this water into the glass and you can notice the flow. It is very easily, very rapidly it occurs. If we pour uh, gum on the plate, you find it takes time also. And it is quite viscous, very, very viscous liquid is this. Now, uh, when uh, we can say that it goes in the layers, the layers of the molecule flowing uh, liquid that are in contact with the surface, that is the stationary. I want to uh, explain this, uh, like sub, uh, understand in this way, suppose this is one plate another is this one. How to understand the viscosity better in this way? These two are suppose stationary faces. When these two stationary faces are there and suppose in between the water molecule is there, we can flow the water very, very easily. 
because intermolecular force of attraction is lesser in this as compared to the gum or the honey. Let us take honey now. Suppose honey is there in between. This is known as the stationary phase. When we are pouring honey like this, so the honey layers, you can see the, the because the distance between the layers over there, the layer of the honey which is directly in contact with my hand or the surface will go little slowly. The above which are there will move little faster. The above will move little more faster. So we can say this flow is a, a unique kind of flow is there. This is known as the laminar flow and we can say the gradation is formed over there. So that is why what happens you will see that when it is flowing the above layer comes faster than this layer because this is in contact with the surface of the, of the container in which it is kept. So uh, uh, the intermolecular forces that cohesive forces and uh, the each layer experience a force of friction from the adjacent layer which I just told you. So this force of friction that is F uh, is present between the two layers uh, of them. So now I am going to tell you all this on the, I will explain this on the board to you. As I showed you on the experiment, the layers, how it works basically. So I drew over here, you can see suppose this is the surface uh, on which the liquid is kept, that is the honey is kept and it is the laminar flow. This is what I explained to you earlier. So due to the intermolecular forces, cohesive force, each layer experiences a force of friction from its adjacent layers. This force of friction F between two layers depends on uh, the area of contact between them A, distance between the layers that is this and this that is dx and difference in velocity between the layers this is du and the difference how it comes that I explained to you the layer which are uh, away from the, uh, the surface will move faster than the layers which are near or the closer to the surface. Now, taking this, uh, these quantities, how are all are they related? We can say that this is a force of friction. We get a formula. F that is force of friction is equal to eta A du upon dx. <clears throat> so here eta is a Greek letter, it is called the coefficient of viscosity and du upon dx is the velocity gradient between the layers. Now how we can reduce the viscosity unit? Um, as we know that if we take this one uh, in the uh, CGS unit of viscosity is dyne per centimeter square or if you take MKS, we have Newton per uh, meter square or we can say it is a Pascal second. So the two units are, and otherwise uh, the viscosity unit is also known as a poise. So we can say 1 PAS is equal to 10 P or 10 poise. Now viscosity depends on temperature and pressure also. Viscosity decreases with increase in temperature. With increase in temperature, as you know, kinetic energy of the molecule of liquid increases, which can overcome the intermolecular forces. Hence, the liquid starts flowing faster. So, if you heat it, the molecule will become a little lesser viscous. Then, viscosity increases with increase in pressure. Uh, on uh, applying pressure, the uh, molecules tend to become more closer to each other, hence liquid starts flowing slowly. Now let us sum up what we have studied. Uh, boiling point, first we have done the difference between the evaporation and boiling point. Boiling point is what exactly? It is a temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid becomes equal to the external pressure. Then we discussed about surface tension. It is a force acting on an imaginary line of unit length drawn on the surface of the liquid and acting perpendicular to it 
towards the liquid state. Uh, and due to the surface tension, liquids tend to have minimum surface area and show phenomena of capillary rise or fall and curved meniscus. This I showed you with the help of the experiments. Viscosity is the, and then we discussed about viscosity. Viscosity is the internal force of friction to the flow of liquid. Thank you.